Hello and welcome everyone to our YouTube channel that is Pharmacology Lectures. We are into the pharmacokinetic sections and we are about to end our second aspect of pharmacokinetic that is distribution. We have already seen two uh, discussions of the topic on this distribution. First was part one where we briefly describe about the apparent volume of distributions and in second portion we describe in brief about plasma protein binding. This is the last portion related to distributions. Now in distribution there is an important terminology that is frequently asked in examinations and also in viva. I would say must ask question from this distribution apart from plasma protein binding is redistribution. They frequently ask what is redistributions. Now uh, le let's take an example and after which it would be very easy for you to understand what is redistributions. We are having one drug that is called as thiopentone. Thiopentone is an anesthetic agent. It's an anesthetic drug which has been given intravenously. Okay, So it has been said that if you introduce thiopentone, I mean still the drug is in the syringe and patient goes into the anesthetic phase. So it's that fast acting, it's a quick acting or I would say a fastest acting, okay. So fast acting drug. But apart from that fast acting, its action also gets terminated very fast, okay. So it's a fast acting, quick acting but having shorter duration of action. So its action gets terminated very fast. So it's a fast acting as well as short acting. So why it is short acting? Why these two things? There is a reason for that. Once you give thiopentone, it initially goes through blood into the brain. Brain is a highly perfused tissue where the you know perfusion is very high. So it goes into highly perfused tissue that is brain. It acts there and it quickly gets redistributed this is the term it quickly gets redistributed where it quickly gets redistributed to various tissues but tissues like fat cells like muscles okay so it quickly gets into these fat cells and muscle cells from this highly perfused tissue so see its action is in the brain the highly perfused tissue and once its action is achieved very quickly it goes into the fat and muscle cells so it's redistributed in fat and muscle cell. It stays there. It stays there. But the action gets terminated. Its action is terminated. So drug is there in the body. Drug is there in the fat and muscle cell. But actions, but actions gets terminated. And that is because of this redistribution thing. So now let's see one by one what different points are suggesting. So redistribution is related to highly lipid soluble drugs and because of that they are faster acting. So highly lipid soluble drugs goes through this redistribution phase. Initially it reaches or distributes to the organs with high blood flow or high perfusion like brain, heart, kidney, it goes there and later it will go quickly into the less vascular but more bulky tissues like fat and muscles and results in termination of drug action. So this process is called as redistributions. So greater the lipid solubility of drug, faster is the redistribution. What is clinical importance? We already seen anesthetic agent, thiopentone sodium, it is injected intravenously. So action gets terminated in within few minutes because of redistribution. There are other drugs acting in central nervous system that are called as benzodiazepine group of drug for an example diazepam and nitrazepam they are also producing somewhat redistribution but thiopentone sodium redistribution is very classic example now when you give this kind of drug this highly lipid soluble and drug having a redistribution characteristics if you give this drug repeatedly what happens these bulky tissues where it gets redistributed get saturated so now the drug becomes longer acting 
so when you give same drugs repeatedly or continuously over the longer pe longer period the sites gets progressively filled up and because of that drug is no more shorter acting now the drug will be acting for more time because all the redistribution sites are saturated or the filled up that takes to another section of this distribution portion that is barriers okay two important barriers there we need to understand first is blood drain barrier and i guess in anet also we have seen about this blood brain barrier what are this blood brain barrier blood brain barrier it's been suggested clear cut it is there in the brain and its role is to prevent exposure of certain chemicals including drugs and toxin to the brain brain is an important part in the body so there is a barrier system there which prevents the entry of certain chemicals into the brain now if you see closely what are the usual capillaries made of usual capillaries are made up of endothelial cells and between the cells there are intercellular pores so both lipid soluble as well as lipid insoluble drugs can pass through these pores but what is there in the brain capillaries or in blood brain barrier now here these endothelial cells are very tightly junctioned you know the junction is extremely tight so there is no more intracellular pores intercellular sorry pores and secondly they are having an additional layer of choroidal epithelium okay so tight junctions as well as choroidal epithelium layer and what it does is only lipid soluble drugs can go through it non lipid soluble or lipid insoluble drugs cannot pass through this brain barrier so now let's see its clinical importance so only lipid soluble drug can pass through this blood brain barrier so only lipid soluble drug can go into the brain i would say and produce its action they also having some pumps and we have seen this kind of pumps earlier as well in absorption topic these are called as p glycoprotein these are a kind of a pump which is present on the cell membrane or a cell wall and their role is basically to pump out the drug or the toxin within the cells okay so if some drugs or the toxin gets inside the cell this kind of pump throws them out okay so this kind of pumps are also there in the blood brain barrier which throws out those toxins if they get exposed to the brain cells there are also some enzymatic blood brain barrier which are having some enzymes and which tries and destroys the toxin or the drug or the chemicals which are dangerous to the brain tissues but if any pathology is there for an example inflammation of meninges or inflammation of brain that would make this blood brain barrier bit compromised and due to which permeability of this barrier increases so obviously in inflammatory conditions of brain and meninges the permeability of this blood brain barrier increases one more important thing about blood brain barrier is chemo receptor trigger zone this chemo receptor trigger zone is important for vomiting so this vomiting uh, due to chemo receptor trigger zone is an important aspect because of drugs so now this ctz is not present within the blood brain barrier there is no blood barrier at the ctz so ctz is outside the blood brain barrier so drugs can stimulate this ctz and can produce vomiting okay so it is not like that that drug is not able to go to the brain and won't produce vomiting ctz it's outside the blood brain barrier so if drug cannot go inside the brain but they can still stimulate the ctz and produce vomiting the entry of drug inside the blood brain barrier is depend on lipid solubility but what about exit exit is not dependent on lipid solubility so these were few of the important points related to blood brain barrier let's come to our next barrier that is placental barrier placenta is a barrier between mother and a fetus it's having different roles but what is more related to pharmac here lipid soluble drug can pass but 
non lipid soluble drug can also be passed when when it is presented with higher concentration or for longer period so see thing is this is kind of an incomplete barrier where lipid soluble drugs passes but lipid insoluble drug can also be passed if they are exposed with higher concentration and longer durations so it's kind of an incomplete barrier still it's having enzymatic destruction of few drugs and p glycoprotein like action which was there in the blood brain barrier so almost any drug if the mother takes during the pregnancy the fetus can get exposed to it so it is very important clinically to know which kind of drug mother is taking or you are prescribing because each and every drugs can having exposure to the fetus so depending upon the risk and benefit the prescriber can take the decisions so thank you very much that was all about distributions and now onwards we will go into the next aspect of pharmacokinetic that is